What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is September 23rd of 2017. Well folks, yesterday we made history in cryptocurrencies. For the first time ever in cryptocurrency history, we were able to have a cross-chain atomic swap between Bitcoin and Litecoin. Okay, I know I, whatever I just said right there probably sounded like mumbo jumbo. And a lot of you out there are like, Nick, where's the technical analysis? <laughs> but guys, this is a really big event in cryptocurrency history. As much as it is simple and as much as it is just a single step, it is definitely proof that cross-chain atomic swaps can work. Now, a lot of you are like, okay, Nick, what are they? What do they do? Well, before I even dive into you know how they function, what exactly happened the other day, and then also describing how you know atomic swaps and cross-chain atomic swaps work on a fundamental core, I'll go ahead and explain basically what happened. In this event, you were able to see a transaction between Litecoin and Bitcoin, which are on separate blockchains, between two parties, and they were able to transact these cryptocurrencies without the need of a middleman without the need of an exchange or someone in the middle to swap it out for one another. So this is pretty big. This is pretty much getting rid of any need for a middleman, extra fees that come with transactions between this central you know, uh, party between the two individuals. So there's no need for that third party. It's now between two individuals and they can communicate and send transactions over separate blockchains. So this is pretty powerful stuff. It's pretty much especially important in this case with all the fears of exchanges nowadays shutting down. With atomic swaps, decentralization fixes the issue. So again, let's go ahead, let's dive into it and talk about what this is all about and really what happened the other day. So Charlie Lee posted the other day that a uh, cross-chain atomic swap was able to happen between Litecoin and Bitcoin. And we can see the proof in the pudding right here. We can see the two insight links, as we'll go to in a second, the different transactions. But this got a lot of praise and excitement from the community. So as we go here, we can see that 10 Litecoin were transferred through, and we can see this on the Litecoin core, as well as BitPay up here. There was a transaction of, oh, ironically enough, elite amount of Bitcoin. <laughs> so I think this is... Uh, Interesting. It's pretty cool to see that it's actually functionable. Uh, people, of course, they can't just enter this through. This actually happened. Now, as to how this happened and what way they're doing it, it's still kind of uh, questionable right now. No one really knows exactly. Charlie hasn't gone out and really like publicly stated how everything works, but we can generally understand how atomic swaps are feasible. This is a concept that's been around since 2013, actually, and has been in the talkings of being implemented up on top of what's known as the Lightning Network. Now, I don't have all the time today to dive into what the Lightning Network is. However, it is a thing built on top. So it's pretty much a, a new feature added on top of the Bitcoin Core technology. And with it comes a lot of great features. You have pretty much instant payments, so much faster transaction times for payments, scalability in the sense of being able to scale millions if not billions of transactions on the blockchain. You have a low cost infrastructure, so lower fees in the sense of transactions, being able to make instant micropayments, which is a big step up for blockchain and why blockchain is going to become more relevant in the finance industry and also in technology as well. But the last part is cross blockchain communications and transactions with cryptographic hash functions, being able to use atomic swaps. So again, we're going to go ahead and dive into atomic swaps today. I recommend you read into the Lightning Network and the immense amount of features that come with it. However, I'm going to leave the links down below so you can read up on it. As much as I'm not going to talk about it today, I recommend you learn about the Lightning Network. I have two great pieces right here from Bitcoin Magazine, and it's funny they're kind of they're old pieces. They're you know a year in crypto is uh, you know. 10 years in the real world. So you can see that these were written in 2016, but they still hold relevance. They're great to learn about. So again, read through these articles, learn about the Lightning Network because they're important to learn about when you're gonna learn about atomic swaps. So with the Lightning Network, it extends the communication to communicate between both Bitcoin and altcoins, or not all altcoins per se, at least for now, but at this core state, you can communicate with a lot of other altcoins that are built off the Bitcoin core technology. So long as they can work with the Lightning Network, they can communicate with Bitcoin now through atomic swaps. So as we'll learn more about how it actually you know, happened and everything between Charlie Lee and everything, atomic swaps are an interesting concept. So let's go down here for a second. And let's look at this scenario. So let's say that Alice has 200 Litecoins. So she has a wallet. She's storing 200 Litecoins on it. 
but she prefers one Bitcoin. She wants to find someone who has a Bitcoin and obtain that Bitcoin with a transaction of 200 Litecoin to the other individual. So in this case as well, Bob has one Bitcoin, but he prefers 200 Litecoins. So Alice and Bob agreed to trade. Usually this would happen through an exchange with atomic swaps. You do not need this. But here's the problem. You know, you would usually rely on an exchange because there's a sense of trust with it. You know that a transaction will not happen through the middleman without both parties agreeing to it and the middleman transacting both ends and both of us receiving our respective cryptocurrencies. In the case of us just making a transaction, neither Alice nor Bob trust each other. They could be two random parties. You and I maybe as a viewer and as me as a content creator, let's say for example, we're making a transaction of 200 Litecoin and a Bitcoin. I might not know who you are, and I might not know if I can trust you. Well, of course, I trust all my fans. But again, this is a very valid point. And this is why exchanges have always been needed, or at least a middleman to confirm that transaction, a reliable transaction. The other may not return the favor. So this is why Alice and Bob are going to set up an atomic swap. So atomic swaps use what's known as a hash time locked contract, where two different parties to receive their uh, cryptocurrency, their respective cryptocurrency in the transaction, are going to have to meet to a certain uh, a certain standard before they can get it. And we'll talk about that through my drawing I'll show on the sketch pad. But basically, they will not be able to receive their cryptocurrency unless they go through a system that is going to confirm both parties will be able to receive it. So there's a few different interpretations of how you could do this, how atomic swaps could work. However, today I'm going to demonstrate to you all in its most basic form how an atomic swap looks and how it can work. So in a general sense, the most basic version that we're going to kind of talk about today um, is using what's known as a secret number. Okay, so in this case, I'll go over here to the visualization because it's probably going to be worthless for me to ramble on about it for five minutes without a visualization. So on here, let's say, for example, my boy Charlie Lee and I want to make a transaction. All right, we're going to use atomic swaps for it. So here's me over here, and we've got Charlie Lee over here. And in this case scenario, Charlie Lee wants some Bitcoin. I, I'm asking like, Charlie Lee, look, I know you're the bank for Litecoin, my friend. Can I get some Litecoin? I want uh, 100 Litecoin, okay? And I'm going to send you the respectable amount of Bitcoin. We both look at market exchange prices and we want to transact between each other. So we have an equal amount, we've agreed to it, and we've decided to do an atomic swap between blockchains. So seeing as we're built on the Bitcoin core technology, both for Litecoin and Bitcoin, we can make this cross-chain uh, transaction between one another and we're going to go through with it. So I'm going to agree to send this amount of Bitcoin to Charlie Lee. He's going to agree to send this amount of Litecoin to me. But here's the catch. It's not going to send just yet. Because, in this case, we're going to use a secret number. And in this case, I'm going to keep it really simple, and I'm not actually going to use a number. I'm going to use a catchphrase. You know, you could really honestly do this in a lot of different ways. But I'm going to generate, on my side, a catchphrase, or a secret keyword, or whatever. In this case, it's going to be simple. It's just going to be cat. For the transaction, and Charlie is going to need to know this in a minute. Okay, so we'll talk about the importance of it. So... Right now, neither of us are getting our cryptocurrency for the atomic swap. I'm not receiving my Litecoin until Charlie gets his Bitcoin. But you're like, well, th that seems unfair. Why is he getting his Bitcoin? Well, because I've created a secret keyword, okay? Now, for Charlie to receive his Bitcoin, he needs to enter my keyword, okay? And in this, in the real world, it's a secret number. But in this case, it's a keyword. It's cat. So he's going to have to type in cat on his end to receive his Bitcoin. Now... Once I send that to Charlie, once I say, okay, Charlie, use the word cat, okay? He types it in. Oh, his Bitcoin transaction is confirmed. He gets his Bitcoin. But along with that, by confirming that, that he gets his Bitcoin and he's typed in my keyword and I've made that transaction to him, I instantly get my Litecoin because of that. So it is relying on me to make sure that he gets the keyword and it goes through. And I was able to get my Litecoin so long as he was able to get his Bitcoin. This is at its core level, the simplest way to explain atomic swaps. So it's very powerful. And in this case, we didn't need a third party. We didn't need Bitrix or Shapeshift. We, you know, we did it all on the blockchain or the cross uh, crossing of blockchains. So again, the Lightning Network is very powerful in that regard. And we were able to do a completely cross-chain atomic swap without some third party. So 
again, this is speaking on the fact, you know, as I've, I've been talking about you know, over the past week, people have been talking about, oh, you know, they're going to shut down the exchanges. They can stop Bitcoin. They can't, folks. We have this system right here where we can make transactions between two separate parties. This is the future of exchanging. This is the future of being able to communicate between one another. And I think that, you know, it's going to lead to a questioning of, you know, making sure with each new cryptocurrency we create that it can easily be implemented on the Lightning Network, that it can be utilized in cross-chain communication, because not all altcoins can do this right now. There are supposedly ways that you can get around it if it's not built on the Bitcoin Core technology. But for all of the cryptocurrencies out there that utilize a lot of the same Bitcoin Core technology, preferably Litecoin, Dogecoin, uh, and I think like Z, uh, Zcash maybe as well, there's a lot of other ones out there that are built off Bitcoin Core technology. Most of them are functional with the Lightning Network, and they can do this eventually. So I think it's a fantastic concept. And to see it actually working in practice, to see a functioning cross-chain atomic swap is big, folks. They're not going to be able to stop cryptocurrency. This is living proof of it. It's so cool to see uh, use of use of uh, separate blockchains and making transactions and no need for a third party. So again, folks, this is a very historic time. And I hope to see more of this. Can Charlie do some more cross-chain <laughs> atomic swaps? We want to see more. We want to see more proof of it. Uh, and I, I think it's it's just a very bright day for cryptocurrency. And it's cool to see Litecoin out of all players doing this. I think that, you know, Charlie Lee and the active community behind Litecoin are making it happen first with Litecoin. And I think to the longs, this is uh, definitely a, a bullish sign for Litecoin. As much as it can be done with other cryptocurrencies eventually, it shows that the Litecoin community is active. And it's good to see at least an example of it. What do y'all think about it, though? I think this is a really cool event, but I'd like to hear what you all think down in the comments down below. Get a discussion going. Do you think that atomic swaps are going to replace the need for the majority of exchange transactions? Do you think that uh, you know the process will become mainstream and simplified? Or is this something that's just kind of a gimmick and you know not really important in the long run? I'd like to hear what you all think down in the comments down below but until then everyone i will see you all in the next video stay tuned